Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Last week, one of our country's most prolific and elegant fashion designers, Osilo Modupi, the creative genius behind Kalo Fashion House, had his latest collection displayed at the New York Fashion Week for the first time in his illustrious career. He joins me now via Zoom to tell us all about it. Silo, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me, guys. <laughs> Now, let me just congratulate you for representing South Africa at the Emerge Fashion Show at last week's New York Fashion Week. Now, what was your first response when you got that phone call asking you to showcase your latest collection at this event? Yo, you can just imagine, especially <laughs> under this pandemic, getting that um, response that you, they actually selecting you to come and showcase in New York. And this show was actually during um, New York Fashion Week. So it was quite exciting, eh? And for, for me as a child from South Africa, you know, it's a big opportunity. And I just wanted to yeah, get into it and just represent. Mm. No, listen, you did so well. You definitely put us on the map. But Silo, this is not your first time doing a fashion show for an international fashion platform. So how did your past experiences prepare you for the showcase? From my first fashion week when I was graduating at mm. F uh, Africa Fashion International, I had to learn a lot in terms of backstage, models, um, producers. So that actually geared me up for this uh, international showcase. And my first one was actually in Italy. <laughs> um, I got to represent our country there. So I got to learn a lot of things. I already knew the basics, but, you know, in terms of the clientele that is there, the market, and how do people adapt to certain fabrics that we have in our country, um, I had to contribute a lot as well. Now let's get into the collection itself and the fashion that you showcased at the Emerge Fashion Show at the New York Fashion Week. What inspired this creative mind for this collection? Okay, with this collection, I just felt America. Let's go South Africa. So I themed the collection The Rainbow Nation which is a representation of our country. So I just wanted to tell a story about where we come from and where we are as a nation. So hence, that's why I chose the Constitutional Hill to be my location for my shoot, um, which is a raw, raw history of um, our country. You know, Nelson Mandela was in prison there, Winnie Mandela was in prison there. So my woman who I've dressed in the show is a very strong and confident person so I wanted to evoke that through the inspiration and clothing, yeah. Now, I also want to get your opinion on global and virtual showcasing of these fashion shows and fashion weeks due to the global pandemic. It's completely changed the way we view the fashion industry globally, but also at the same time, it's unified us within the global fashion industry and it's given more unrecognized designers, more of a universal platform. So what are your thoughts on all of this? So as creatives, we have to create. We have to come up with new ideas to, to show the nation that we are still alive, we are still kicking we're still here. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I'm more of a storytelling uh, person, uh, more of um, putting together, um, you know, presentations. Mm -hmm. So it works well with me because of that. But then I just feel that um, that's where we had it actually as a creative space, the virtual route and yeah. But something that we've also seen you do is the type of body that you dress. You're able to almost dress every kind of woman. I mean, our current Miss SA second runner-up, the beautiful Natasha, wore one of your designs for the Miss SA pageant just last year. So what was the inspiration behind this dress that I loved so much? And of course, is there any chance that you'll be dressing her as she represents us at the next Miss Universe pageant? <laughs> okay, first time when I saw Natasha, I just thought beautiful. Yeah. So I wanted to create this beautiful goddess. Um, she's the queen of the forest kind of vibe. She's actually literally a queen. Hence, I had to embellish the dress from scratch. Every bit on that dress was handmade, was hand put. So in terms of showing her sexy body, you know, the skin tone, blending in well with the color of the dress. And yeah, in terms of Miss Universe, um, yeah, hopefully we'll get it. But I do believe that it's, it's an opportunity. It's a big opportunity, actually, um, because we did very well on her Miss SA dress. So if Miss Universe comes up as well, you know, we'll kill it because it's all about representing the country 
uh, to the rest of the world. Absolutely. Now, before we let you go, I just have to ask you one question. Yeah. For some of our young designers out there that want to take their South African designs onto the global stage, how can they do that? What words of encouragement do you have for them? For me, the only thing is stick to yourself, be you, you know, don't try to copy anybody else, um, be authentic. Mm. That's what they're looking for. When you go overseas, they're looking for that one thing that is different mm. from anybody else. Um, and always uh, strive to work hard, never give up. Mm. Um, try to find the right people to help you, to channel you in the right direction. Wow. Because um, you need the connections to actually make it anywhere in this life. So. Yeah, I think that would be my advice for it. Beautifully said from such an incredibly creative individual. Thank you so much, Silo, for touching base with us here on Afternoon Express. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Bye. Now, how proud are we as the Rainbow Nation? We are as proud as can be, knowing that one of our most prolific fashion designers, Usilo Mudipe, is paving the way on influencing South African fashion on an international level.